Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at the Ravens' epic 34-10 victory over the Houston Texans in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. We're going to start off with a few of the stats. We're going to get into our recap, and I have some clips that I want to mention and show toward the end. So without you know just dragging this thing along, we all saw the game. We all watched it. We we saw the, the big picture. Let's get into the kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what happened. And um, let's just talk about it. Uh, extremely, extremely pleased with how well the defense played. Man, you couldn't be any more lights out than what the defense was. Uh, C.J. Stroud had been was on a crazy run. But like uh, Roquan said, there has to be a villain in every story. And that story has run its course for this year. Um, Stat-wise, Texans didn't have very much rushing. The Baltimore front seven shut that down, and we'll talk a little bit about more in the recap. A little bit more about that in the recap. Uh, C.J. Stroud was 19 for 33, 175 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. They didn't lose a fumble, so the defense really did that without creating turnovers, which is even more amazing. The Texans didn't score a touchdown. Their special teams did. Their offense didn't. And the defense did that without creating a turnover, without a sack. A boatload of pressure, but without any of the key components that you normally have to have to win a game. Um, Nico Collins, 5 for 68. I mean, that's okay, but honestly, I don't remember those 68 yards. And and not to crap on Nico, because I thought he would get his. I still thought the, the Ravens were going to win, but I thought Nico would make have an impact. And he really only had, like, I know he had the one big play where they ran dagger deep on, like, third and 20-something, and they got it. And um, maybe one other little screen play. But other than that, I don't remember him much in the game. But that's two of the five catches right there. Uh, Singletary had five. Dalton Schultz had five. And at one point, Dalton Schultz was giving Ronald Darby the business, but that got adjusted. Um, they had, what, their top four tacklers. Three of them were DBs. So that tells you that front five for the Ravens were doing what they needed to do to get the running backs up to the second level. Offensively for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, 11 carries for 100 yards. Justice Hill, that's 9.1 yards per carry to be exact. Two touchdowns. Justice Hill, 13 for 66, 5.1. Gus Edwards, 10 for 41 for four. And Davin Cook got in the mix toward the end with eight carries for 23 yards. Um, That's 229 rushing yards, people. Salute to the O-line. Salute to the O-line. 22 first downs to 10, uh, 25% on fourth down, which I didn't like. Uh, total net yards, 352. Offensive plays, 67 to 47. Uh, rushing yards, 229, which I spoke on. They did outpass us, 175 to 123, because you take off for sacks, you take off passing yards. For team, for team passing, you take off for sacks. Um, penalties, 11 for 70 for them, 3 for 15 for us. Uh, turnovers on either side, no no turnovers. Uh, four TDs for us, one for them. And um, time of possession, 37 minutes and 35 seconds to 22 minutes and 25 seconds, which is we pretty much dominated the stat sheet. And in the second half, it looked like it. We Time of possession was pretty much ours, uh, keeping the ball, holding on to the ball, getting first downs. And that's the key right there. We got 22 first downs of that 10. That's and despite how I feel about third down, you still, you racked up. I mean, you got a bunch of first downs on first and second down. That's that's what that means. Because you had 22, you only got four of them on third. So that's 18 first downs either you got on first or second down, which pretty darn good too. But let's get into the, the drive-by-drive recap and kind of kind of run through that before we get to the, the video evidence at the end that I want to share with you. And we all know the first half was was not a lot. Matter of fact, let's. I'm just gonna go on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I had some stuff for possession by possession. But we're gonna just go to the second quarter. Second quarter when when stuff kind of got spicy, and I I'll start with the third third drive for the Ravens. Uh, Lamar opened that drive up with a huge 23 yard gain straight up the middle. It wasn't a design run, but after that was a good mix of quick passes on this drive. Lamar also Lamar also had another big run to give the Ravens a. First and goal from like the two or three yard line or something like that. 
I had a run by Gus that we didn't get much on. The very next play, we run power. And I think Ronnie and Lamar is the only two people to know that Lamar is going to keep that ball. He gets out on the edge um, real easy and scores. With the Ravens now lead 10-3. to 3. Uh, When I look at the, the, Ray, the Texans' possessions, there are a lot of three and outs over there. A lot of three and outs. A lot of penalties that the Ravens flock help create by uh, false starts, delay of games. Uh, people that were at the game, your presence was felt. Your presence was felt with those false starts and those delay of games. Mo mainly false starts, though. So the, the people that said it don't matter how loud you are, just go to the game, wrong. Completely wrong. It, it matters. It matters. It matters. Now, um, after we did score, we got him on a three and out. We got the ball back. Didn't do much with it. Uh, Jordan Stout with a terrible punt. Early in the game, he had a real short punt that hurt. That thing led them to the first three points. Then he had another terrible punt. This one's right down the middle. They returned it back for a touchdown. The score is now 10 to 10. At this point, I saw some people in my chat saying, we're going to lose the game or fire Harbs. Because the Ravens get the ball back and don't do much with it. Don't do much with it. They punt or whatever and kick it back to Houston. And that's when the, the doubts start creeping in. But I told the people, just relax. R E L A X, like like Aaron Rodgers said a couple years ago, relax, and because I wasn't worried. Not to say that it wasn't pleasing to see us not playing at our you know highs, but I wasn't worried because the defense was still playing lights out. And I remember saying it like, hey, they could even miss this kick, and they was like, we're gonna be down at halftime. Like, we, they made they ain't made the kick yet. They probably miss it. Maybe they'll miss it, and they missed it. Um, we got it back. Still didn't do anything on that because they got two of their three sacks after that missed field goal. And um, when the halftime, 10-10, I wasn't stressing because the defense was playing lights out. They didn't even sniff any kind of success in the run game, any kind of success. So coming out after the half, and this is where I kind of go into the detail part of it, uh, Ravens started the second half receiving the ball. Uh, Ravens got the quick passing game going. Uh, they ended up with a 15-yard run up by Lamar up the middle to make the score. 15, I'm sorry, 17 to 10. Now, that I do think was a design quarterback run. I think it was a draw. Because if you look at Gus, Gus kind of leaked up the middle and went straight to the linebacker to block him. So I think that was a design quarterback run on the touchdown that Lamar scored on. Uh, Texans get their opening possession. They try to establish the run and really don't get much. They do get one good run by Devin Singletary, but the Ravens defense and the Ravens fans start turning up the heat. Um, and we were getting pressure, whether it was – with four or blitzing because we were killing their guard center guard combination with the with the combination of Michael Pierce, Justin Matabike, Travis Jones. Those three guys were destroying their guard center guard combination. And they were a big key to us stopping their run, which makes them a different team. If they could play action pass, he they they tough. But they weren't able to play action pass. They were they had to drop back and pass or straight run. And they couldn't get anything going in the run game. All right. So next possession for the Ravens. The Ravens pick up a huge fourth and one on Lamar Jackson boot. Like I said, I think him and Riley were the only ones knew that was they was going to keep that. And he got that. Um, the fourth quarter starts with a short run by Gus. Then on the next play, Lamar fakes a quarterback sweep and throws it over top to Isaiah Likely, who goes over Derek Stingley and catches the ball. Uh, quote, unquote, mouses him. I've seen this play run three times. First time I saw it live um, in New Orleans. They ran it in New Orleans when they played the Saints last year. And um, I can't remember if they completed it or not, but the person was wide open. Might have been a little overthrow or something like that. But the next time I saw it, we did complete it for a touchdown. I think it was too likely. And then this happened last night. So great play call at the time. It was needed because Lamar had, did start to kind of run a little bit. And so when he took off, ran that corner like he was going quarterback sweep. The whole defense came up with the exception of Stingley and likely was able to win that one-on-one. -on -one. And you got to win your one-on-ones. You got to. All right. Their eighth possession, the Ravens defense forced a, another three and out. Uh, Marlette times up a perfectly. Uh, he perfectly timed up his blitz from the slot position. Um, CJ had went through his pre-snap reads and didn't even look at Marlette the last time before he came. Because he just kind of waited, waited, waited. And right before the snap, took off. And he timed it up for CJ out the pocket. He had to throw it away. On his ninth drive, the Ravens got the run game going, like, for real, for real. 
uh, it completely took over. We started seeing outside zone from the uh, from under center, which is what I be screaming for. Uh, Justice Hill had some good ones. Davin Cook came in and got some finally. Uh, Lamar ended this drive with the fake power again that I think him and Ronnie are the only people knew that that was coming. And uh, right now, the offensive line should have been com co uh, commended for that drive. It's now 31-10, to 10, and the defense can just pin their ears back and go get it. Um, on this ninth Ravens defensive possession, the Ravens fans and the Ravens defense continue to heat up C.J. Stroud, uh, forcing the Texans on the turnover on downs. It was fourth and five, maybe with like five minutes left, and they had to go for it because at this point they're they're down 31-10, to 10, so they, you know, you, you got to go for it, and that's why they went for it. Normally you would punt from that situation, but down 21 late in the game, what do you have to lose? Uh, the next the next and last offensive possession for the Ravens didn't go very well. Uh, on this drive, the Houston Texans committed everything to the run game, and the Ravens don't get much out of it. And at one point, you can hear Isaiah Likely scream to the sideline, stop running that shit. But the Ravens do get enough yards to end the possession with the field goal attempt. Justin Tucker knocks it down. It's 31-10. to 10. No more offensive possessions for the Ravens. Texans get it back. Can't get much going. They ended up handing off an inside zone to run the clock out. Ball game over. On to the AFC Championship game. Ravens flock. Hosting the first ever AFC Championship game in Baltimore. I might I add. I learned that during the stream yesterday. First time hosting. I didn't know it. And I was watching um I was watching somebody this morning. They couldn't believe it either. After saying all the success that Baltimore's had, them never hosting the AFC Championship. That was crazy. I can't remember who I was watching. Might have been Shannon or Chad or somebody. So whoever I was watching, they said it. But let's go to, I got some clips. I'm going to show you the clips, and I'm going to give you my thoughts about the clips. And then we're going to wrap this thing on up. What does it mean to you? Uh, you know, it's just a blessing for my hard work. I mean, it instills confidence in me and it instills confidence in Lamar to be able to throw the ball and, and, you know, trust me to make the plays and go from there. To be home. I mean, just get used to, you know, having Lamar trust me and put the ball up and not make him, not make him wrong and always coming down and try to go the distance. Now, Isaiah likely said one word twice in those two clips that really lets me know that you got to earn eight – trust before you know you can get in that offense and make plays he, he mentioned the word trust twice in that clips and it lets me know how big he is on trust and you got to earn that trust from him and i think early in the season likely didn't have it because of like drops in the coach game and other situations but he definitely has it 100 percent right now Oh, that was huge. Like all week, we know we stopped the run, but that's with any team. You stop the run, make a team one dimensional, and it's going to be very hard to do anything. And uh, that's something that's credit to the big dogs up front. I think the best front seven in football, starting with our uh, front four, whoever is in there, whatever the rotation is, and then the uh, best two combo uh, in the league with uh, me and PQ. And so when you look at it like that, you stop the run, make them one dimensional. That's when we like all uh, ball hawks and guys that are make plays on the ball do what they do. Hearing what Roquan had to say, it sounds like I kind of might have been in the meeting room. He said the exact same thing that I had been saying all week. Stop the run, which prevents them from being a play-action team. And then when you get them in a situation where you know it's passed, pin your ears back and go hunt. And again, it didn't matter what front four was in there because they was getting pressure. So, I mean, I know, have a general idea of what I'm talking about. And to hear Roquan kind of say what I've been saying all week, was just the icing on the cake to say, hey, you, I saw the same thing they saw. I saw the same thing I saw. I well, they saw, which just going to motivate me to do more film study this week. I don't care who it is. It can be my little, little cousins. It can be grandparents or whatever. You know, you roll that ball out there. They got to get dealt with. They come into the bank by any means necessary. So whoever it is, I don't care. Brooklyn, I'll <laughs> that, hey, that man wide open. He said nephews, cousins, grandparents, I don't care. Roll that ball out there. <laughs> they got to get dealt with. I love it, though. I love it. I love it. I love that attitude. That's what we need as a leader on defense. You need somebody that got a little crazy in them. No, no, I wasn't surprised. You know, um, they were having success first half with um, Blix and I saw Blix and Zero. They was, they was, they was doing anything. But um, we watched a lot of film. 
we was prepared. We just we were just making little mistakes on, you know, protecting the blicks and getting the ball out on time. But second half, I felt like we was doing what we were supposed to do. You did? You did. A lot of cursing at um, halftime. <laughs> That's why I said it was inappropriate, Ron. <laughs> John was on your insight minutes this year. It mean a lot, you know, um, for you for your OC to, you know, trusting you to be out there and point his team, point our team in a, in a great situation. That's all I need, and we gonna go from there. Again, another factor of trust, another another trust issue, and it, it keeps coming up. Lamar mentioned Monk and you know trusting him to put them in the best plays and best situation, you know, the best plays to get out of situations. And I again, I said it in the recap. I think those two plays where they had power and he pulled it out. I think that was only him and Ronnie knowing that. I, and, I, and I'm gonna stand on that unless something comes out. And um, I hear it differently, but to just the trust, man, and you got to you build chemistry that throughout the season. It wasn't there early in the year. It grew, it grew, it grew, it grew, and you saw the halftime adjustments, you know, come out in in Munkin and Lamar. They 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 realized the pressure was coming. They had an alternate plan to it. They start hitting um, Justice out the backfield to kind of slow that pressure up. Uh, got a couple first downs off of that concept alone, and. He got better after that. He got a lot better after that. Uh, we know what we're capable of, and we wasn't putting that out on the field. Um, so when you got guys like Lamar who's upset about that kind of stuff, um, who usually don't tend to talk that much, but when he does, it's very vocal. Um, you just got to sit, sit up and listen. Uh, the guy got something good to say, um, and he was rightfully so in the right place to say what he said. So, um, you know, that's when it's our job to just keep him giving the ball back and let him do what they do. Did you plan to attack him? We just do our job. Uh, you know, they like to take shots. They like to do a lot of gimmick stuff um, to get guys open and stuff. Um, Cleveland just had bad eyes. They was on all the stuff. They just had bad eyes late in the downs. Um, and that's what we just did. We just played smart, played to our uh, rules, and just did what we had to do. I mean, Lamar's postgame, not postgame, halftime speech or talking must have inspired not only the offense but the defense to hear Queen say what he said. Um Eight was locked in, fired up, determined not to let this opportunity slip away. And um, he apparently fired everybody up. And he, like he said, he mentioned there was a bunch of curse words and it probably wasn't appropriate, wouldn't be appropriate to uh, repeat. But here Queen also talk about how Cleveland was on a lot of stuff and they just didn't play with their eye discipline. That's another detail that this team does that, that helps the defense about. Details matter in the NFL, and they seem to be the best at details defensively so far this year. He can, and he, when he runs the ball, it's like Steph Curry hitting a three. It's Bingo. so deflating. That's, that's a good it's one. so deflating, Ocho, yeah. because we got him. We got mm -hmm. him. Damn, we don't got him. Don't got he him. got yeah. 20 yards when he got him. You had yeah. him for a five-yard loss, but now he has a 20-yard, and he's doing – I mean, that's accurate. That's one of the most frustrating things it, it has to be to be a defensive coordinator versus Lamar. You cover the routes. You you get pressure on the edge. You maybe even get pressure up the middle. And you feel like you got him boxed in. And next thing you know, he down the field for 25 yards. Or he slip out the pocket and they get scramble drill for a 25, 30-yard reception. Like Shannon said, you got him, you got him, then you don't got him. And that'll conclude my recap of the Ravens 34 to 10 win over the Houston Texans. Now on to the AFC championship game. We'll find out later on today who that opponent will be. I appreciate you guys for coming out. If you have not hit the like button, please do so. Hit the subscribe also. I appreciate all the new subscribers for coming through. Hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me for this recap for the watch party yesterday and the call-in show thank you guys and i'll see y'all soon man film coming up uh late tonight or early in the morning whenever the plug drops it and uh share this video out man share this video help us grow uh, we're on the road to 10k we almost at 9200 um i keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing keep grinding and i'll see y'all soon man love y'all peace